Hi, this is Valerie Getch. One of Lightroom's biggest strengths is its image management. You can filter your images using keywords, star ratings, flag status, camera, lens, location, and even by aperture, focal length, or shutter speed. In this tutorial, I'll show you the various means for searching and filtering your photos. For simple searches when you're not dealing with too many images, you can just change the sort order in the grid view toolbar pop-up, which is down here. Currently, uh, the images are sorted by capture time, but if you hit this little arrow, you can change to added order, edit time, edit count, rating, pick, label text or color, file name, extension, type, or aspect ratio. And if you want to quickly filter by a keyword, just go over to your keyword list here in the right-hand panel. We'll open that up. And you can either put a keyword here in the filter box at the top, or you can use one of the keywords here. And for example, we'll use the keyword beach and just hit the little arrow to the right and you see all of the images will be filtered just to show the images with the keyword beach. Now if you have tons and tons of images, maybe thousands, you will probably want to filter by more than just one criteria or you may not remember which folder or collection a particular image or set of images is in. So that's where Lightroom's filter bar comes in. And you'll find the filter bar at the top of the preview panel here in the library module. And right now I have it toggled off and I'm going to hit the backslash key. So it's toggled on and you'll see it right here library filter in the upper left corner and then here are the parameters you can use for your search. You can either search by text, attribute, or metadata. So using the filter it will show just the images based on whatever criteria you, you set and all other images will be hidden. So for example you can see all of the photos tagged with a specific keyword taken in a specific location or date or with a certain lens or with a certain uh, star rating or flag pick or with all of that criteria together. So first we'll look at search by text. You can either click on the word text or hit control F on your keyboard and that will open this little drop down menu here. And Starting with the first, you can search on any searchable field, and what that means is that would include searchable metadata, caption, file name, virtual copy name, keywords, custom metadata, and collection names. And you can also search on uh, searchable IPTC, which would include things like creator, address, and copyright, or searchable EXIF data, which would include things like camera information. And any searchable plugin field refers to a third party plugin that you might have installed. So you can set your text fields to either contain, so I'm going to leave it on keywords first of all, and you can set this box here to have your text contain or not contain specific words or to start with or end with words or can even be empty. So, for example, uh, I could do a search for all of the images that don't have keywords applied. So if I take out the word beaches, just going to delete that. Let's change this to our empty. And this pulls up all of the images I'll show you here that don't have any keywords applied. So as you can see, there's no keywords on these images. They're all empty. So that's kind of a handy way for um, knowing that you haven't applied keywords and you need to. You can select the folder or collection name that you want to search, or you can search your entire catalog. But if you have thousands of photos and you're really general in your search terms, say I want to search for all my beach photos, that could be hundreds or maybe even thousands of images. So I might want to add additional attributes or additional uh, fields to help narrow it down. So let's, in this example, let's go back to um, using the search, search for keywords. And I'm going to change that empty to um, put in contain. And I'm going to use my word beach. 
and that's going to filter all my beach photos. And then now I want to add um, an attribute to narrow this down further. So I'm going to click on attribute here and this enables me to search by flag status, by star rating, and by color label, and even by kind if I want to search for master photos versus virtual copies which are um, based on masters but you can um, change the develop data or metadata or even videos. I'm going to change to sort by flag status and that doesn't bring up any photos because right now it's showing that the rating is two star equals two stars and I don't have any images that are two stars and flagged as a pick. So let's look at our other options. Right now we have the star rating equal to two stars. So we can change it to rating is greater than or equal to or rating is less than or equal to. So let's say the rating is greater than or equal to two stars. And so now it pulls up two images that are greater than or equal to two stars and that are flagged. And then let's add a color label to narrow this down further, though this is kind of an obvious example though, isn't it? So I'm going to hit the red and then there we have our red image. So that's narrowed down to images with the keyword beach flagged as a pick and have a two star or greater rating and contain a red color label. So I'm going to clear this filter by clicking none and then we're going to look at metadata as another filtering option. So we click here and you'll see that you have these four columns and the first one, these are the defaults. The first one is date and then camera, lens, and label. You'll note under the dates that there are these little um, arrows. So if I click on this one here for 2006, you'll see I can just filter by month to see images that were taken in a specific month. And um, you can also, if you look at, there's a little drop down arrow on each of these titles here at the top and you can filter on different criteria. So you can change any of these columns to um, any of these different options to search by file type, label, camera, serial number, lens, focal point, shutter speed, aperture, ISO speed, flash state, GPS data, map location, location, city, state, and country, creator, copyright, job, aspect ratio, smart preview status, treatment, develop, metadata status, or none of the above. So you can change any of these and you can even using this little um, where it says custom filter here, if you click the little down arrow here, you can also change uh, to back to default columns if you've changed them and you can save your current settings as a new preset. I also wanted to point out this little padlock here in the upper right hand corner. You can see that it's currently locked and to unlock it, uh, just click on it and I'm going to lock it again. So when you have it locked, Lightroom will keep the same filter settings when you move to a different folder or collection. Finally, the other way of sorting is to use smart collections. I talked about this in a previous video and I'll put a link to it on the screen so I won't go into great detail right now. But to remind you, smart collections are sort of like saved searches. To create a smart collection, click on your, the plus sign on the collections panel and click on create smart collection. And then here you can name it and you can put it inside a collection set if you wish. Well, if we do that, we have Beaches Collection that I used before, so you, we can put that inside the Beaches Collection. And then you can set your criteria here to match any, all, or none. And you can select from all of these parameters such as pick flag, rating, label color, text, source, file name, date, camera info, metadata, develop adjustments, etc. And to add additional parameters, you just click on the plus sign. So I'm just going to go for the first one. We have rating greater or equal to three stars and then we'll just click here to add another criteria and we can just call that, um, let's say develop has adjustments is true would be, you can say is true or is false. And then you just click on create and then it will pull up all of the images that have those criteria. And in that case, it's these images here. 
So one thing about Smart Collections, once you create one, it stays in your collections panel until you decide to remove it. So if an image no longer meets the criteria, though, it will disappear from your Smart Collection. So if you change, um, say, a, if you one of your criteria was images that were four star or higher, and you changed one of your images to three stars, then that image would disappear from your Smart Collection. Uh, likewise, if you added any new images, that meet the criteria that you had set, then they'll automatically be added to your Smart Collection. So as you can see, Lightroom's filter is pretty powerful. Even with a 10,000 or even 100,000 images in your archive, if you put a little work ahead of time to classify your images, you can find just about any photo in only a few seconds. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit the like and the subscribe buttons below. I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Lightroom tutorial. Stay tuned for more tips and tutorials as we work our way through the Lightroom workflow. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss anything. In the meantime, go out and have fun with your camera, and I'll see you back here soon.